like at home? Did you, when you were listening to records, did you sit down and, and imitate them on the record? Yes. Uh, that, that was, the, that was the, the main way I really learnt was by listening to records and, and trying to work everything out and, uh, that I heard directly. And when did you start to play in public? Um, properly, I would say, after my, uh, it was after my A-levels. I, I had a year out because I was getting frustrated with the amount of time I wasn't able to give to music. And it was in that year that I got a, a, a gig at a, a little uh, a pub. Um, where they had weekly jazz and I started playing in the interval and uh, I got kind of taken under the wing by the people that were playing in this pub um, All these kind of older set jazz musicians who played in all the dance bands um, And then when the dance bands kind of died they kind of sold themselves as jazz musicians and all these guys They were really I mean they were great that all of them played by ear so I felt as though I could relate to them um, and they were really willing to kind of show me um, show me the tunes that I didn't know and show me what I was doing wrong. And we get to a stage where I was doing gigs with these guys and I half know the tune, I'd be busking away. And Such the, as? Oh, tunes like uh, Satin Doll, which is a really easy, easy tune, but I'd be doing this, and just kind of guessing, and then he, the bass player would be shouting out the next chord, E minor, A7, E minor, A7, you know, like that. So um, I was literally kind of in the old fashioned way learning these tunes on the stand, which is why I'm, I, I can remember all of them so so well because I, I learnt them in such a unprecious environment. Looking back, do you think they were really teaching you? Totally. No, not I, just I mean, helping you out. I mean, yeah, really they teaching were, they you. They were teaching me. I mean, yeah. there, there were times where I'd go around, uh, um, you know, to, to their houses. A great bass player called Clive Morton, who'd been on the scene for years, and, and he'd show me because he could play piano as well. So I'd be playing certain tunes. He'd say, "Well, actually, there's there's a better change you can put in that song." You know, he'd show me different changes for the blues. Ra rather can... than when you get to the end of a 12 bar blues, everyone goes. <laughs> like that. And then he showed me there's a much more jazzy way of doing it where I go. Like that. It's just a bit more jazzy, a bit more hip, a bit more. You know, not everyone knows those changes. So um, he would show me those kind of things and it, it would fascinate me. When did it roll into something that you began to think you could make a living out of? You know, I, was, I paid my way through university by playing, by playing piano in hotels and at weddings, at working men's clubs, all these things. And uh, a lot of people came up to me at these gigs and said, do you have a CD for sale? And I didn't, so I, it was my second year at university in the summer. I had, uh, I had about 480 pounds, precisely. I found this out the other day, left over from my student loan. Um, so I made a CD and I pressed them up with some help from my mum and dad and I sold them at gigs. And that was the point where the CD sold really well and got great reactions. I started getting more gigs, I had to start turning down gigs. And it got to the point where I did gigs the night before my final exams at university. It was really at that point that inside, although I'd never vocalised what I was thinking, I was really thinking I might be able to do music for a living. Every year, everybody buys a jazz record, you know. It doesn't have to be kind of blue by Miles Davis anymore. It should be a living, breathing thing from someone that's an artist of the moment. One song we were working on is uh, What a Difference a Day Made, which was originally a massive hit record for Dinah Washington. What a difference a day made. Twenty-four little hours 
This was a song from the 50s. It was a, a pop hit standard. And it came more from a rhythm and blues kind of a thing, you know, because Dinah Washington was one of these interesting artists who, who had uh, um, massive jazz credentials, but every two or three years she'd have a huge <laughs> pop hit, and that was one of them. And the first thing I noticed was there was like on, on her record, way off in the distance, there was this really this feeling of triplets, like there was gold. Where there used to be rain, there used to be rain. So we put that on the bass. Boom, boom, boom. It's a pulse. And it's very sensual. And we made it a little more uh, late night, smokier. Since that moment of bliss, that thrilling kiss. It's heaven when you find romance on your menu. What a difference a, little less vocal. a day made And the difference is you Oh. <laughs>